we go. Everybody and welcome back for another Carrier is pretty much anything that allows you to watch that beautiful content that you love to watch My name is Clyde and I am here today with Matthew Ross Hey guys And Michael Aston. Howdy How you guys doing this week? Doing oh, good Let's not talk about weather <laughs> <laughs> What, it, because did, did something, something? I don't know. Or... I don't know. You know, it's just something I kept hearing about. You know, a lot of rain going well, I, somewhere. I heard down. something about like the sun disappeared last week. Yeah, no, that yeah, that, it did. I haven't heard anything since. So yeah, I think we angered the gods or something with that. We we talked a little bit about that last week, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that that was cool. And then then the sun disappeared for us for about a week, but. We didn't get it so bad, so I don't really have anything to complain about. All I've got to say is one little thing, is that the average amount of rainfall for a year in Seattle area is about uh, about three feet of, of rain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, poor Houston got four feet in a couple days. Yeah, they could use it. I mean, how else are those islands of fire ants going to get around town? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it, I'm so it's so bad. I mean, the alligators deserve a chance to explore the city every now and then. Yeah, yeah. It's we we got rain and and it seemed like it rained a lot here, but I think we topped out at like a foot and a half or something like that. So it was oh, a lot of rain. It, it seemed like a lot here, but it was nothing compared to what they got. I it's mean, it's a lot of rain. For, we're about three hours away from Houston here in Austin, so it's just far enough that we got a lot of wind, a lot of rain, but nothing terribly horrible. Well, I'm glad to hear you're safe. I'm, I'm hoping anybody you know is safe as well, and everybody who's having any hope, any uh, problems, I hope everything gets better for anybody who's listening. Yeah. 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 Because that sucks. I uh, seriously hope that the weather gets better here. It's been... It was like 50-some degrees the other day. Stop complaining. That's It's August. I was going to say, wait a minute. Isn't it summer? It, it they, they say it's summer, but I don't believe them. Um, yeah. It, and then, like, it was just been raining nonstop. Like, every time I have a free moment to do something, it's like, oh, nope. It's raining. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, we're actually praying for rain and where we are. It's so weird <laughs> that we haven't had rain in uh, in months. <laughs> Grass is yellow. It's so yeah. weird. <laughs> actually, it's, I'm used to that in Central Washington, but not it's, here. It's not that weird, really, right? Like, I mean, the summers in Seattle are absolutely get, amazing. In summers of Seattle, you get rain once a month. Yeah. Not four months of no rain. That's well, like that. That a little weird. True. There usually is some rain, but... It's probably just about the best summers on the, in the country. Well, I, that's my opinion. There, living there, in there I, is I, a reason that yeah. Seattle is known for two things, grunge music and coffee. <laughs> yep. Because uh... everybody's hunkered down into their garages and trying to keep warm and awake because the sun's not out. and So, yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, rock on. Well, um, you know, why don't we uh, think we got a couple things to talk about this week, right? It's yeah, been... we actually had an okay news week. It, it didn't start out that way, though. We're going to start off with a little uh, note about Apple. They have uh, have been rumoring for a little while that they're going to be coming out with a new streaming box, and it looks like we're finally going to get some more information about uh the, about them we're on september 12th is the rumor date we're going to be uh, getting all these different announcements and very likely uh the rumor is we're going to have a new 4k compatible uh 
set-top box from Apple, so new Apple TV. The other interesting bit of the story is that it sounds like Apple and the movie studios are arguing. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bore you. I mean, this, <laughs> it's really early into the stories here. I know. But the... <laughs> But it yeah. also sounds like that Apple's saying that they want to sell 4K movies for 20 bucks, while the studios are asking for $30 for movies. So there's a little price going on there. And I say, screw that. Why are they Why so expensive? I don't know. Uh, sound, I mean, I, if you're buying the movie for that amount, maybe that makes sense. Cool. But um, I don't know. I did not. Did I? Ca- I didn't catch if this was a rental price or if it was a no. This, this was their price. purchase. Their purchase price. So ah, that was okay. that was permanently adding it to your iTunes library. Um, I mean, th- that's the thing. Is like the question you have to ask is: Should a digital movie? be the same price as a physical movie because that is about what you pay for the ultra hd movies in stores anywhere from about 25 to about 40 Mm dollars and so that's what you're paying for a 4k movie in the stores and but they also (laughs) usually come with a dvd and (laughs) a digital copy and some sort of digital copy now but most of those are those digital copies 4K or are they just uh, HD, the 1080p? Um, I haven't bought any 4K Ultra HD movies, so I don't know. Um, I have a 4K TV, but I just haven't justified. Well, none of the movies that I've wanted to buy have been available in Ultra HD, so that's been part of the problem. Mm. I don't know. Well, if if the price, if this is a buy price, I'm, my mistake for mistaking this as some type of a rental price for twenty dollars, which was making me kind of sick to my stomach. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, if that's the act, they're talking to if Apple's trying to use their marketing muscle to get us twenty dollars movies at four K, I have no problem with that because yeah. they'll set the standard pretty much. But those yeah. will be locked in iTunes and. Right, no. but because Apple sets a standard, and, the industry will follow the standard. And since the right. industry will follow the standard, then you can get your Ultra 4K on your Roku or your whatever. The, and The other thing is, I don't... Do they allow you to download the movies um, onto your device? I, I'm not sure about that. Well, I that. mean, you technically own it, so you should. Uh, I mean, I, I know with the music and stuff like that, they got rid of the DRM a few years ago. Okay. I know for a fact that you can download the move in uh, other movies, maybe not HD 4K movies, um, but I do know that the there are other movies you could you were able to download to your device so you can watch them locally. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would assume that if they do that with other movies, they'd probably let you do that with this. Though I don't know with the Apple TV if it has a large enough drive or large enough memory to <laughs> store an Ultra HD movie because those would are like well, you- twenty or something like you that. You should be able to fit at least one. Yeah, you yeah. may have to remove yeah. some other apps, but you can get one on there. <laughs> That's all you need, right? Yeah. Well, doesn't uh, the Apple TV allow uh, like expanded memory via USB or SD card? No? I don't think so. Oh. Okay. Never mind, then. I, I, I want to I wanna call to to point your your title recommendation, which is the reason for your yawn, right? Yes. Is Apple announces last year's tech. It's finally, I mean, how long has it been since we've had um, other 4K streaming devices that you could get from other companies? And Apple is just barely getting around to releasing a 4K well, Apple TV. I, I guess mean, technically it'd be two years ago because of my, my, my Roku 4, I guess, does 4K. Yep. And I got it two years ago in October, so... <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, my... I, I take that back. Um, <laughs> welcome to two I'm years ago. Tech. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, they're finally catching up. And that's, that's what's really remarkable. Now, actually, it's standard Apple practice. Oh, and then yeah. they'll, they'll take the, all the credit and uh, say, look what we invented. We, the best. Well, they'll sell, they, will, they will, in fairness, they will sell more 4K movies than all of the other oh, services yeah. combined in the next Everything that everybody has done up to this point, they'll sell that before the next year is out. And that's why they'll claim that they made 4K happen on, on streaming devices. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, because, Will, uh, Will in the chat makes the point, sorry, uh, that they'll he, he thinks that they'll probably up the storage on the 
next generation, which they haven't oh, yeah. announced any of that. The so new box I should will hope have so. 64 gigs or something like that built yeah. in. And yeah, there'll be options for 512 gig models. And yeah, it'll, it'll, all those features will be there. The Apple TB with one only terabyte. Only 799. Of <laughs> oh, it, it's only going to be a one seven or seven ninety nine. I figured. Oh, for the like for twelve for, for the four, five twelve gig model, you know. Oh it, no, sorry. Following uh, their naming standard, it would be the Apple TV Pro. Ah, you're absolutely right. Nice job. Congratulations on calling that. I think you're right. <laughs> All right, moving on. We have a story about Hulu. Uh, they've uh, just a little story about the fact that they have picked up one of the last uh, channel services that, that they did not have had before. They picked up the CW. You can now start watch your local CW cha- uh, station on the live TV streaming service, which uh, is a good thing because uh, a lot of people like to watch those shows like um, the, the Flash and ah! <laughs> Sorry. And the top of your head was cut off. That was no. <laughs> Ow. The, the, the Twitch streaming problems are uh, leaking into our show. <laughs> I'm blaming on them. Twitch's fault. No. But as you were saying. Uh, no, that, that, uh, this is uh, something a lot of people are really looking for because they like watching a lot of those shows like Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl. Uh, there's other uh, shows on the CW people like. I believe my, I believe Stitchers is on there. That's a halfway decent kind of weird show. You know, uh, yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually kind of glad about that because um, I've been using the CW app for a couple months now. Not once I found out they had their own app, it wasn't the CW Seed, um, and they've got some, they've got some stuff I, I enjoy. Uh, I don't get into the superhero stuff other than maybe that I Zombie show, but uh, <laughs> um, because of the streaming app, I found out about a show called Hooten and the Lady which nobody has heard of it is it's kind of fun um it, it's it's a lot like uh indiana jones meets uncharted mm. weekly and you okay. know but uh no i mean if if uh cw is able to be uh viewed by people over these services that there's no downside yeah, I mean, the great thing about adding channels and and stuff to services is, if you don't like them, don't watch them. If you do, now you can watch them easily. Yep, it's great. Yeah, now Hulu just needs to get off that beta tag and you know watch it for real. Yeah, they I, but need- they they can't do that until I can access it on my Roku. That's true, and that is the what, last step until uh, maybe I'll even try and give it a good shot. So yeah. All right, we have a story about Sling TV. They've introduced a new new little offer. They've got this little program that you can you, you can use on their website that allows you to find out when the local sports game of that of your choice, mostly football, it looks like, uh, is uh, showing up, and how you can watch it using their services. I've uh, tried this out real quick to see if there was a way I could watch the Seahawks last week, and um, nope, can't do it. <laughs> well, it is preseason. Yeah, no, it and probably most wasn't. Most preseason game. stuff isn't really aired, is it? Yeah. No, well, yeah. I'm, uh, outside of local Much markets. More limited availability, yeah. yeah. Nonetheless, this is a cool oh. feature. No, absolutely. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. At first, I was super stoked about this. When I saw this, I was like, Finally, these people are realizing that they are providing this over the internet and they can do more than what you got on your cable TV 20 years ago. But then I start to look at it and you have to do it inside, like in a web web browser. Mm -hmm. Why in the world is this not integrated directly into their apps? Uh, That would be brilliant. I would be so stoked about that. They're probably waiting on a revision or a major revision change to do that um and while they can also work out the kinks in the web i mean that a lot of these features you'll you'll see like start out like even back to netflix early days you couldn't edit your queue in the app you had to go (laughs) to the website and i actually kind of miss that um but uh and the base will be the same it'll be very easy for them to wrap it into the apps and 
it, you know, there's, but it's just one of those things where it would have been brilliant to me to just see this show up in, in my, yeah. on my smart TV or whatever device I'm using to get Sling TV and just have it show up there and be able to take advantage of it. It would be totally amazing. I would, I would love it. Now, I mean, I don't have Sling, but it's, this is what they should be doing. This is where they can innovate and they can really set themselves apart from traditional cable, which is such a, a structured and non-dynamic interaction. You can push up and down on the channel button. I mean, effectively. And, you know, that's, that's yeah. what's crazy about it. So um, this is really moving towards what it should be. Yeah, uh, Will in the chat says that PS View also has this feature. Um, so, yeah, uh, actually, YouTube TV has a similar feature where you actually pick your, uh, your, you know, what teams you're you're watching, and it just records them. It just yeah. goes, oh yeah, we yeah, I saw it. It was available, so we recorded it for you. And uh, that is that is one step beyond this. And so I like this feature, but at the same time, it's, I realize that it's already been surpassed. In some and which so. one is that? What? Which one that does was, that? That was YouTube TV. Now, YouTube TV <laughs> does almost all the local channels and a couple other channels. ESPN is in there. So, so it has a... So oh. I can bring up my 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 Seahawks and my Mariners, and I just turned them on as teams, and I didn't have to do a thing. It just starts recording them for me. Yeah. So with the PlayStation View, what I did last year was I said, I like, you know, I set college football as one of my favorites, mm -hmm. and it basically recorded all college football games, <laughs> which, I mean, it, so yeah. it, still, it was a little bit of a pain to find the one that I wanted, but it did accomplish the goal of giving me all the Boise State games that appeared on ESPN. So, I mean, I got, I got, to, I got to the goal, though it did, it, I did have to, I would have to set that up on every channel because the show is channel specific. So when you say I want to watch college football on ESPN. It's like, okay, I'll, I'll track all of the ESPN college football ones. And so then you would have to do that for all the different channels, which that would be a little bit annoying, but it would work. And it, it, it's an easy solution. The, what you're talking about for YouTube sounds way better. Yeah. I it, uh, so I, can I go down the rabbit hole here for just a minute? Yeah. Do yeah, remember, you remember Ario? There's yeah. the antenna. Type. Yeah. It's the guys who are making the little dime-sized antennas that are picking up channels and streaming them over the internet, and they got uh, got to the Supreme Court and you know proven that that's that's just you can't play shift. You can only time shift. That kind of crap that happened uh, with the Supreme Court. Anyways, um, so I'm curious if you know a lot of people like you click that button says I like college sports, and so everything was recorded. I wonder what the Supreme Court and that way of thinking feels about the fact that very likely uh, these companies are using some type of data deduplication in order to not have to keep a copy of every single stream that was recorded for you and every other person who checked that box that's favored is uh, favored for that um, uh, for those those streams because. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is this insane? Is this something that, you know, this, uh, I'm sorry, it seems insane that this is not something that everybody should say, should be able to do. I should be able to say, I want to watch that show, and it already is recorded somewhere. I shouldn't have to have my own copy of a stream somewhere. Okay, I'm done with my little yeah. crazy room. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'll get I, off the soapbox. Well, I mean, and ultimately that's what, like, PlayStation View is doing now, right? Like, they're not probably physically recording a version of everything for everybody. I they, don't know if that's, like, within the letter of the law. I mean, well, I mean obviously, on demand, yes, that makes sense, the but they're recording for you. No, the, because the difference here is that they've signed contracts with each of the, okay. with each of the channel providers that they have. And so they've said, here's how we do this Okay. You're, you're agreeing to this. Where Arrow was trying to just provide this service without consulting any of those companies and paying royalties and stuff like that. So nice. that's it's a huge difference in, in the operation model. Um, if, much it's the, if it's in the legal for, language, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Just for me, my brain was like, is there a copy of the stream for every single person out there? Is yes. that insane? <laughs> okay. 
yeah. It is insane. I, I was going to say, though, uh, as they talked about on Cord Killers on Monday, uh, there is another site out there. It's just a standalone website. I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head. That lets you, it will tell you if you put in your team that you like, and it'll show you all of the places you can watch it and what package you need. And so for someone that may not already have Sling or PlayStation View, Mm -hmm. that would uh, probably be uh, a good thing because then it'll point you so you're not, you don't set up a subscription someplace and then find out, oh crap, they don't even have what I want. Uh, I think the so, channel but, is suppose.tv. I could be wrong. No, it was something where can I see my... Uh, and then you put in your team or is something like that. Okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll put it in the notes of the YouTube video uh, if it doesn't pop up in the chat uh, before the end of the show. Okay. Um, all right. That's all I had to say on that. Uh, next story we have is we have uh, some more rumors, actually some leaks about the new DVR uh, functionality that is available to DirecTV Now subscribers. Um, the DirecTV Now beta is a beta that is, um, you know, you're not supposed to tell anybody about what's going on in the beta process. It's um, what's the term I'm looking NDA. for? NDA, non-disclosure agreement, which means that you know, not this stuff isn't supposed to leak out. That nothing really juicy leaked out except for a nice screenshots of the web interface and the one one thing, which is it looks like the DVR is going to offer 100 hours of DVR service for the for on there, which is a decent amount of time. I'm very happy about that. Uh, do we have any uh, clues on when that might happen? <laughs> no. Right. At least I don't th think so. I didn't see anything on there that's about when that was going to happen. So. Hopefully, they said by fall. I think they were going to try to get it working by fall, which is a pretty long, uh, yeah. big wide window, really. Yeah. But they didn't say what year. <laughs> oh, my fall. I, I, it's 2020. I actually don't November, know if they said finally, which year. We told you. No later, we told you. No later fall. than a fall season in some year. Yeah, exactly. Within this millennium, um, uh, W. But W. Scott is one does uh, have the link for that. Where can I watch oh, yeah, my dot where team? Where can I watch my dot team? So <laughs> if you if you're interested in that, um, definitely worth checking out. That uh, is brilliant. Yeah, I think Mike will be uh, using that to watch uh, the Idaho oh, potatoes. There. Already there. All right. <laughs> Already realizing. Are, oh, are they the, what, what's the team? Are they the russets? <laughs> that might be slightly more appropriate. I've never seen uh, any any wild mustangs in Idaho, any, any broncos. Well, there there but, may have been at some um, point. Yeah, um, but Hulu TV or YouTube TV? Which I don't have YouTube TV in Austin yet, so it's mm -hmm. it's Hulu TV for me. Huh? So, so that that site solved the problem. I'll switch to Hulu TV before the. At least before the middle of the season. Provided you have a device that Hulu TV works on. It works on the Fire, right? I have a Fire TV, I and I have a Roku stick, and I have a smart TV. Yeah. So I, I'll i get it with one of them. Yeah, because <laughs> as we talked about before, it's not currently available on the Roku yet. So. Nope. All right. Well, rock on. Uh, and then uh, that was... Uh, you know, speaking about this direct TV and when the DVR is coming out, uh, it is about time that we start another 30 day trial. That's we've true. Been, it's been a while. And we've talked about direct TV. We've talked about direct TV for several months. I mean, going on a year now, because we have now passed a year uh, here. Yep. Um, and I think that we're finally to the point where direct tv is worth planking down a little bit of money and trying it out and to give them i mean they they've established their service enough that it it's possible to give a fair uh, that's true review because if we had tested it back in january it probably just would have been like don't do it it blah. sucks but i mean <laughs> yeah they, they they needed a chance to get out the bugs so but uh, I mean, the thing is, they, they still don't have the DVR for general use. They right? don't. And that's why I was curious about when it was coming, because it would yeah. be nice. 
if be they able to had show it that out. coming out in September so we could check it out. I mean, I would say I pretty much would never use this if it didn't have a DVR. I, yeah. I've well, the only thing I have watched live on PlayStation View, pretty much since I got it, was the hurricane coverage, just to make sure that we weren't going to get hit by a tornado or something. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> that's yeah. about it. Uh, we have one more story. Oh, was there? Yes, there is. What was the it's a little story? St- it's a little story. Uh, you know, Amazon Prime Video. It's uh, you know, you you can get it on your Android phone if you install it with you know, the Amazon Store app that you have to sideload into your system and all that crap. Well, that's not true anymore. You can actually download it. You can get it without that. They actually have the Amazon Prime Video app now for Android. Not for Android TV. Not yet. But um, hopes are good that it will be coming to that too. Cool. Yay! Thank you, thank you, Amazon. I always rank on you. I'm always p- p- saying that you're doing those things stupidly, but and I really like the fact that you've done something smart. Thank you, Amazon. You could already watch. Uh, yeah. Uh, nah, never mind. I'll. What? I was gonna say. I, I'm just scanning this back to make sure that I didn't misunderstand it. Um, no. This means that you can watch Prime Video and yeah. get all the Prime Video stuff now on your Android device. Yeah, which you is already like, you... could. You just, had no. to, you just had to download the Amazon app. But, right, I mean, which yeah, you... if you don't want to sideload it, uh, okay. Right. But, I mean, it's not like it's hard. You push a button and then you go, do you really want to install this? Yeah, I trust Amazon. You know, <laughs> it's not like it's Joe uh, Tinfoil from you know, two houses down that developed it. Um, but okay. Rock on. I, I'm excited. I'm I, very happy. I would be more excited if it, uh, was on the Android TV because and this I'm... was one of the main reasons I left Android TV and went mm-hmm. to Roku. And I'm willing to bet that it will not come to Android TV for a little while because I'm also willing to bet that since it's coming to Apple, Apple's paid some type of money to have some type of exclusive. So, yeah. but eventually, I'm hoping eventually. <sighs> See, and it's 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 the Android TV never gets mentioned, and that it's not the problem of, or it's not the fault of Android TV. It's these developers that refuse to put their content on it that makes life hard for Android TV users. If you really want to ha- watch uh, uh, Amazon your Android TV, you can still buy a Shield, and it is already preloaded on the Shield. Yeah, uh, yeah, paying like right. three hundred bucks. Yeah, I, I know. That's the problem. That's that's why I, that's why I've got a Roku, because um, <laughs> I can just do whatever I want. Yep. Well, that was it. That is our stories for the week, for the most part. All right. Well, hey. Uh, so I kind of. I, I, I missed it. I didn't realize it was one more. So uh, as I was saying, and <laughs> when I got it out of order, uh, starting uh, since Friday is the 1st, mm-hmm. September, let's uh, go ahead and do a 30-day challenge. Uh, we'll try out the DirecTV now. I will go ahead and pay for the two or three months up front. That way I can get my, uh, get a, Free Apple TV. Ooh, get the old model. It, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say too bad you can't do it right after they release the 4K model. <laughs> well, they they're not gonna give you that one, but uh, yeah, obviously <laughs> that would um, be cool. That would be worth it. But I mean, the Apple TV, uh, I'll probably just throw that on eBay anyway. So um, <laughs> brand new. You better do it quick, guys. Again, a new bottle's coming. And then, if I pay for the three months up front, then I can get the that discount from AT&T. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Wheels are turning. How can <laughs> I make money off of this deal? Yeah. I might be able to. You add in, if you, if you can get a decent price, maybe a hundred bucks for the Apple TV, um, yeah. new in the box, I don't know, then you might yeah. actually end up. Because AT&T, uh, with my not, the my second tier unlimited plan, I can get like, 20 bucks off so i'd get it for like 10 bucks a month 
10 bucks a month, I could justify paying for a service like that. I I don't know if I could in the long run for any of the ones we've tried so far the at the full yeah. price, but yeah. So if you would like to participate, uh follow along, play along at home, uh starting September 1st, we're going to start using the Direct TV and uh see what it shakes out by the end of the month. There Did, is a one month free trial. There it Wait, what? Because uh, when I tried it, there was only a seven day. Oh, I thought there was a for Direct TV. I tried when I tried it a couple month, uh, a couple weeks ago. It was a seven day, and I the only reason I did it was I wanted to watch Rick and Morty on my TV and not in the browser. Oh, you're oh thirty day trial available with some offers. So oh, with I don't some know. offers. Okay. Yeah. So that. if you look, uh, there may be a way to get through it uh, fairly cheap. Uh, okay. if, uh, but I mean, you want to play along at home, uh, however works for you rock. Use, on. Uh, I've got, I see a promo code online to get a one month free trial. You could probably search for if you, uh, use your, your Google skills. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. All right. Uh, we got that out of the way. Um, we should probably move to the deep dive to a topic. Uh, it's a little, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but mm. there was like some kind of fight last week, or is it over the weekend? I don't know. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pardon me. You you were so distraught by my lack of knowledge about this uh, so-called fight that you forgot how to swallow. <laughs> And breathe I, at the same time. I had heard that there was some sort of sporting event going on, something fight related. I wasn't sure, honestly, if it was boxing or MMA or, or just what, like some but, playground brawl <laughs> or a playground brawl that they were going to put on TV. Watch kindergartners beat each other you know, up. If they called it the flagpole or at the flagpole, <laughs> I would tune in to watch Good. that. <laughs> I did pay 20 bucks back in the day to buy the DVD of Bum Fights. I would watch Kids Throw Down. <laughs> yeah, How much is it going to cost me? <laughs> uh, no, we had a... <laughs> there was a big fight. It was... Um... I don't, uh, you know, how long has it been since we've had a big boxing match being, you know, promoted around? Well... It's actually... To me, it seems like it's been a while since a really big boxing match has been promoted and everybody seemed really excited about it. I mean, um, it, seems, it seems to me like every year there's a the biggest boxing match in history or yeah. the biggest fight in history. And, you know, it, it, how many I, I, I would be curious to see because my guess is that it's pretty typical for the new thing to do better than the previous one or. Like, I can almost imagine that there's just, like, a steady increase in... Well, yeah, I mean, you figure you're building on the popularity of the last one, so each mm -hmm. new incarnation, in theory, if you did it right, should be better than the last one. Right. But then you get fights like uh, the one pay-per-view that everybody was excited about back in the 90s, where Tyson was coming back, and he was going to fight this dude, and then... It was like one punch and the fight was over. It was like, <laughs> I paid how much for what? Yeah, well, that's been my experience with UFC. It's uh, a, a lot of money to get a PvP uh, 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 peer view show of this about two hours of talking and some, you know, some kind of warm-up fights that seemed not that interesting. And then the main event that lasts 20 seconds and it's over. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, this one, I think, uh, the, the question is, did people get their money's worth? Not because of the fight, but because of their lack of ability to watch said fight. Yeah. They were having so I, many issues that they went ahead and delayed the starting of the fight for 20 minutes. Because even cable providers were having trouble with the demand. Yeah. And so. uh, but I mean I, I gotta say hey. this was Showtime's first attempt <clears throat> to do a pay-per-view streaming event, 
And so, yeah, they had a lot on the line. Uh, they had a, and they're doing something that they had never done before. How do you prepare when you don't know what the server demand's going to be? Or, you know, uh, loads on the website. Uh, do you, does the popularity of the fight intention or unintentionally DOS your system? Um, and that's kind of what they found out. <laughs> right. So you now, now, go ahead. Um, who was this? Did you say this was an HBO thing then? No, Showtime. It was Showtime. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah. It was so, on Showtime anytime. I mean, this. I, I I agree with what you're saying to some extent. I mean that it's it is very difficult as, as a developer and as as a person that's done this professionally for for regular websites, never anything of this kind of magnitude. It is very difficult to to judge the scale and the amount of of hardware and stuff that you need and and the bandwidth and stuff, but they should have been able to learn from HBO's previous mistakes. It's really disappointing and, and a bad sign for them that they had this much difficulty because y they could just go back and look at what happened to uh, HBO with Game of Thrones and with some of their other big events, and they should have seen that. And, and on top of that, a lot of these are probably pre-purchased. These were not things that they, um, like, bought on the minute that the games, that the match started. So it, it's very surprising that they wouldn't have been able to make a better prediction of the amount of load or at least plan more appropriately to be able to spin up more instances using AWS or whatever uh, services they were using, Google Google's cloud service or Amazon web services or whatever, Azure. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm a little surprised, honestly. Yeah. So they, there was a lot of people who were trying to get signed in and there was a lot of people who were experiencing even buffering problems, just trying to watch the show, excessive buffering, people having login issues. So they were totally overwhelmed. They just didn't realize how much big this fight was apparently. And so, um, and if you're not ready for, you know, getting the expanded, be, you know, if you're not prepared for that kind of thing, uh, there's not much you can do in the 20 minutes that you're given in order to try to get this thing up and running yeah. in the usual, in most cases. So, but what's interesting is that they, at first, were talking about not uh, giving anybody their money back. Mm. No, when they first started this, uh, the Showtime people who bought it directly through Showtime, Showtime said, yes, we're going to give you your money back. UFC people, for the longest time, there was no no conversation happening. There was no word going on. In fact, it seemed like what was being said is, "You, sorry, you paid for what you what you got. And yeah. for a long time there, there was even a, 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 a lawsuit that was started in this case, at oh, which yeah. point, finally, reason. finally, yeah. UFC.TV UFC said, Okay, we're trying to do our best. We're going to go ahead and, and refund anybody who wasn't able to watch the stream. So You know, I'm actually going to change my position on this because I just realized they knew exactly what the, what the bandwidth requirements were going to be because you had to pay for it in advance. <laughs> so if you know, True. hey, I've only got 200 seats in my in my theater but there's a thousand tickets sold um yeah maybe no we theaters. need to move to a bigger theater <laughs> so no i no there is absolutely no excuse for this because they knew based on sales that ex just exactly how many people were gonna be trying to stream this all at the same time yeah so and, go ahead and and, and the point being that this is a planning failure, right? I yes. mean, oh, they, they, they should have planned for what they knew they had. And even if they didn't know what they had, they should have planned oh, yeah. to, you, you plan to above because of last minute far more. Yeah, exactly. And obviously to your point, Matt, yes, there's nothing they could do when they got to that time where it was supposed to start and they delayed it 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. That was a, that was a pointless effort because the 20 minutes wasn't going to provide them anything really useful unless they had already scheduled, like I said, if they had set things up so they could just right. spin up another hundred uh, AWS instances and 
or another thousand of them and, and, and accomplish the problem or overcome the problem. But that's a planning failure. They needed to plan for that. And it's pretty disappointing, like I said, that they wouldn't have planned to be able to accommodate that. Um, and to hesitate to give the money back, I kind of get it in, in to the extent that they probably wanted to do some sort of post-mortem to identify like what the pervasiveness of actual issues was. Are we going to refund everybody's money because three people had problems and they were just really outspoken? Or was this something where, you know, 75% of people had problems, so let's give everybody their money back. Right. Um, so my guess is that's probably a part of why they delayed the, the refund. Um, but yeah, they, they should have put, at the very least, they should have made a very vocal explanation of, we're looking into the situation and what exactly happened and we're going to take care of everybody and yeah. make everybody. You know, and, and I mean, the one thing that I can understand is, okay, it's kind of hard if you're going to do a refund and have a refund policy, it's kind of hard to prove you know, who actually deserves the refund, right? If everybody, if some of the people um, were able to watch it, I mean, obviously there's going to be the cut and dry, looked at the server, and these people never actually authenticated right. and logged in. Right. But then again, how many of those people were just people that paid and then never got around to it and ended up not being home or something? So then, or, I mean, then it's really instant. problematic. And then, yeah, you could see that, oh, the, these people were able to stream this, uh, this much data, but, you know, of of those people who actually saw the fight, do, do you give a refund to, you know, just leave it lax and then basically anybody that says, hey, I didn't get to watch it, um, they get a refund? Because then everybody's going to say, "Oh, hey, uh, yeah, I it didn't work for me," which is which is my point about the post mortem, right? Yeah. Like that's that's them trying to determine if this was seventy five or eighty percent of their viewers, and they should refund pretty much everybody, or if they just need to like dig in and identify the twenty or the ten thousand people that actually got cheated of the of the million that, that they had going. So it's it makes sense. But again, this is a communication thing and this is what companies fail so badly about nowadays is we're in a in a day and age where communication is instantaneous between millions of people and you can't just sit on something for a week like you used to be able to get away with. Um, you need to communicate clearly and decisively to the general public via social media that you're at least going to take care of people and that you're trying to figure out what needs to be done to to take care of people and you know people will still be unhappy they're they'll immediately say well you should just give everybody a refund but it is reasonable in my opinion for companies to take a little bit of time oh, determine yeah. what really happened and provide the appropriate response to the appropriate people. Yeah, yeah. But they got to communicate that. No, absolutely. You can't just like come out right off the bat and say nope or yep. It's uh, hey, we hear ya. We're gonna figure this out and we're gonna do what we can to keep you happy. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. So. The question now becomes, is this something that can be learned for those the art streaming uh, providers? Is this a lesson that hopefully we can try to avoid so this mistakes, these mistakes in the future? This is something that, um, I mean, every single new technology, and this is kind of like the first big, big streaming event like this well, that they tried to put. I mean, well, maybe, maybe oh, not. Oh, for them, for them. For yeah, them, yeah, especially. Yeah. For them. I was going to say, yeah. because HBO went through this. Uh, yeah. When they first launched HBO Go, uh, right. the first episode of Game of Thrones for that season did not work for like at least half of the people because yeah. they got slammed uh, way above their expectations. But in their defense, it wasn't a one time only episode or uh, uh, showing Event. where everybody needed was going to be on at the same time and you knew. All right. these people paid for it. That that was a subscription service where anybody can watch something whenever they want, so there's no guarantee. And mm -hmm. you know, you, 
that that's hard. But um, well, and this wasn't, and, and it wasn't launched on the day of the service, right? Like no. HBO Go had been running, and the usage, the utilization for other shows, even on their premiere dates mm-hmm. and stuff, were nowhere near this high. Now they knew Game of Thrones was their most popular show, but yeah. to your point, they couldn't possibly know no, just they how couldn't, many they couldn't have predicted. And, and that is something that even even if they would have known because of where we were in the streaming technology at the time, this is this is years ago, um, it's possible that they just couldn't have quite measured up to understand just how much server load that was going to take and yep. um, how much time it was going to take up to spin up new instances and things like that. So it's, but the point, like, like I said earlier, this is something where UFC should have learned from other people's mistakes. They should have been watching what happened to HBO and what happens, you know, what what things uh, Netflix and other companies have gone through um, when they've had new big things go out. And they, they should have been they should have learned from what uh, the Super Bowl has been dealing with every year for the <laughs> yeah. last four years because that's about the only other event I can think of that is day and date all concurrent yep. where you know okay starting at this time people Everybody's are going to log going on. on the difference is super bowl they hope people are going to watch it right mm-hmm. last Showtime, year they didn't even ask you to authenticate it anyway just yeah, turn it on yeah exactly uh it's so probably it easier on their be, servers it could be five people it could be five million people they right. don't know but showtime knew exactly they had exact numbers and so there, I, I still say that there, there is no excuse, and they kind of handled it crappily. Um, Showtime, yeah. hopefully next time, this is better. And I think the best they can hope for is that they don't piss off enough people that the next time they try, <laughs> people don't say no. Well, uh, I want to just iterate that uh, Showtime was one of the streamers, but not the only streamer. Uh, apparently, the uh, the other big stream that was used was UFC.TV. So. Okay, that's right. And they uh, they uh, they are the ones who at first were saying we weren't going to provide any kind of disc, oh, okay. uh, refund. And um, I think Showtime went right away and said, yeah, you didn't see it. We're going to refund you. I think it's this UFC.TV, guys. And then the statement, the, he says that it's, uh, because of New Lions technical issues. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. So, yeah, the blame is being passed around. Yeah, we, uh, us as consumers love to see blame passed and know, know who screwed up because that matters so much to us. I've yeah. got two fingers. I need to know where to point them. <laughs> At any given time, just tell me where to point them. Is it here? Or is Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just um, give the show that we pay for. That's that's what we ultimately care about. We don't care who screwed up. If you didn't provide the show, we want our money back. Nothing else matters to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and will you better not be pointing those fingers at me, because I will <laughs> break those fingers off. <laughs> Ouch, man! <laughs> Reach right through the internet. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, any other thoughts uh, on this? Uh, since none of us actually watched it, and we I was going to say, <laughs> did any of us actually care at all about this fight? I mean, I, I, I think it was Saturday because I asked a buddy of mine. I was we were going to do something, and he went, "Oh crap, I can't. Uh, we're going to go. I'm going to go watch the fight." He said, "You can yeah. come." I went, "Meh." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have some friends who are aware really of this. in. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mike. No. Go ahead. All right. I had some friends that uh, were really into every UFC fight. They would just, hey, it's fight night. We're going to go. You can come. Come along. And, just, and uh, he would uh, you know, get the big screen TV and everybody would sit around on the couch and, and watch the fights. And I, well, I think I came to one or two of those and it was like, yeah, it's, it's not my thing. Sorry. I, I enjoyed the company. I enjoyed being uh, around people, but nah. See, I, I did that one time I had, you know, a, a while back, uh, one of the one of my coworkers hosted a, a UFC party and I went and I realized that it would have been a lot more fun if we would have all been sitting at home in our own houses and watching it online and maybe sharing 
chatting over a stream or something like over that. Over IRC on DC yeah. TV, like a uh, movie <laughs> night. We can have the fight night next time. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that would make a lot more sense to me because then I don't actually have to be by real people, just virtual ones. And they are so much <laughs> Real better. people suck. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Is that a show title? And and it, and going outside now. Because right? to get to somebody's house, I'd have to leave my house, and that's another thing that we could avoid if if possible, <laughs> right? Well, I mean, this is the time of year where I kind of want to leave my house because I know here in about another month I'm going to be <laughs> sequestered again yeah. for nine months. Mm. So I got to well, get outside as much as possible. Go but, out now. But yeah. It's it's just getting to that time here where it feels comfortable to leave your house because uh, because of the weather changes, it's actually not been over 100 degrees for a few days. Yeah. And so that's been nice. When it's over 150, 70% humidity, I don't want to leave. I'd rather wait for the winter when it's, you know, high 60s, low 70s most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right well i think that uh wraps up our uh misguided dis discussion and uh of uh showtime's debacle and i think that brings us to all right guys rants raves what you got? I got a rant and a rave. Ooh. Let's start with my rant. And the rant is at myself. <laughs> What'd you do? Last week I ran the show. Okay. I did. I, yeah, I thought it went okay. I was like, you're, oh, you're okay. killing Mike. He can't handle this. I know. So I'm like, going, okay, we got this thing up and running. I got X split up and running. I've got the kind of thing, you know, all this. I was running a little late trying to get things started, but I really tried really hard to make it kind of look your like your setup and get everything running really well. And yeah, it uh, the the stream was not so good. I know this because, well, I got my so I was the, the show was over. I was like wondering. It was my computer was constantly telling me your CPU is at a hundred percent. Okay, well my lord, my poor little laptop was not handling it very well, but it handled it. Okay, so I get done. I'm like, okay, well let's see what it's like. And I get my copy that's local. It's like, wow, that copy's kind of small. I turned it on, and yeah, it's there, but it's crap. My copy is total crap. I mean, it's choppy, horrible. This is a really horrible local copy. I'm like, oh, crap. So uh, uh, DiamondClub.tv has a nice uh, way you can download the source file. So I For did now. that. I know. Uh, so I downloaded that. And that was huge. And so I realized that uh, XSplit decided to not just save the local copy of the stream that I was sending, but also to encode it. Which is why my computer, the stream sucked, and I blame myself. Hmm. So I'm sorry. See, it, it, so you used XSplit. I used XSplit last time. If I had last known week. you, you were going to use XSplit. I would have just sent you my template, and then it would have had all the settings and everything. I'm sorry. That's all right. No big deal. I, I live and learn, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I do want to rave that it looks like this week I'm going to PAX. <gasps> I've cool. never been to PAX. Cool. Really? This is my first time. Where at? Uh, I in Seattle. Oh, it is. And okay. So yeah, and so I and I am going to be going to PAX for the first time ever, and I've given a uh, permission basically for my wife to go to PAX if I don't come back with PAX box. So <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I if I shake hands using the you know the the, the antibacterial stuff and yeah yeah I'm just, and no touching the eyes and just where. Where like buy a big box of those like those gloves and like just change them out every time you touch anybody. Costco, Costco that would be, gloves. That would be so so fun just to do that, just to see how people respond. <laughs> actually, yeah. Well, no, I'm gonna go up there and we're gonna. I'm gonna do uh, many of the days. I don't know how well. I'm, well, we'll see how how many days I do up there. I do up there, but uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna try to do all this. This is all right before school starts, and school's crazy right now because. Thing, getting things ready right now so i'm hoping i get everything in order for, for that but yeah that's the plan gonna go up and 
and, and uh, do uh, packs and you know, I've, since I've never been, I'm, I'm looking into the various uh, uh, panels they've got and they've got games to play and cool. I'm very interested. I don't know if I want to stand in, in line for hours to play a game that I might never play again. So we'll see. Yeah. Rock That's up. cool. I've always wanted to go, so have fun. I have honestly, I, I know the name, but I honestly don't know what a PAX is. So it's Penny Arcade ex, uh, Expo and Penny oh. Arcade is those crazy guys who draw cartoons. Yeah, I, I know the Penny Arcade cartoons. Okay. I and never they, would have put that together. Yeah. It's it's basically just a big game conference. Yeah, I know people go to PAX to compete in I mean, Hearthstone. That that's the extent of my knowledge of PAX. <laughs> so Okay. Okay. Rock on. Thank you. It's pretty cool. Uh jeez. I, I don't know that I have anything to rant or rave about. I've We've we've discussed the the insufficient quality of shows to watch and whatnot. I don't know what else to talk about. So I'll just say, yeah, football season starts. You get to start Yay. watching State this weekend. Um, it's all on PlayStation View for the first half of the season, but looks like I'll be switching to Hulu TV for the second half of the season. So that's. That's my thing. And okay. I want to rave about you guys providing me uh, value and giving me something, the thing I needed, which was that uh, awesome website. That website's really cool. Went there, typed in or selected Boise State Broncos. Their site's actually messed up, but that's okay because I worked around it. But um, And it tells me YouTube, Hulu, both have all of them, Sling, PlayStation, and the other Sling don't they have the first half of the season so i can see every single game and where i can get it that's that's outstanding that's a really cool website so where can i watch my dot team yep and i mean the credit really goes to uh court killers uh for point that because if they hadn't talked about it i wouldn't yeah. have even known about it because i don't go out looking for <laughs> sports themed uh stuff yeah um well, I probably would have seen it then when I get around to watching Cord Killers later this week. So, <laughs> But thank you guys for letting me know. That's very helpful. And for um, W. Scottis for actually finding the website for us. And yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. See, now you, you mentioned not having stuff to watch. Um, I don't know if this is a rant or a rave, but all of a sudden <laughs> now all my stuff's back and a whole bunch is coming. It's like... So, like, last week, uh, we finally got new episodes of uh, Episodes and Dice on Showtime. I'm super excited about. Yesterday, I watched The Tick. The Tick is on uh, Amazon, finally. And by I watched The Tick, I mean I watched all of it. And, and I was pissed. Thumbs up, thumbs down? Well, we're getting there. Okay. Um, I, I got through it, and it was about... I. And then I was pissed off because I went, wait, there's only six episodes. Mm. And it, they were just kind of starting to establish something. It just dropped off. And <laughs> it wasn't until today I found out, oh, they're only airing the first half of the season. You nah. could have told me that beforehand because I was <laughs> angry. Oh, I was so angry. It's When, when does the second half come out? Yeah, and I have no idea when the next half's going to come out. Um, yeah, some there was some BS from the director saying, well, in this uh, uh, binge-watching kind of world now, it's uh, better to, uh, you know, give you some and then make you wait, you know, build anticipation. And I was like... <sighs> I mean, because the, the, first, the first six episodes, uh, it's all character building. You're finally, by the time it drops off, you're finally at the point where it's like, okay, it's going to go someplace now. And the problem <laughs> is, I mean, if they were hour-long episodes, it wouldn't be bad, but they're short. They're like 20, 30 minutes. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah I, I watched it. I wasn't really watching it. I basically listened to the show. And so I just, every time it would hit the theme song, I just hit the OK button and go to the next episode. And so, yeah, I'm, I liked it enough that I will 
anticipate the next half of the season, but I am not real happy about the <laughs> bait and switch kind of thing that they pulled. Um, if you're a fan of the tick and even the, the live action, uh, Patrick Warburton version, mm -hmm. they, they did a really good job. They, cause, uh, there was a couple times that I went, wait, he is very, he's doing a very good Patrick Warburton version of the tick. Uh, and yeah, so cool. Definitely. Uh, if you, if you're into, uh, something like that, it's on Amazon prime first six episodes are streaming now. Very cool. All right. Well, word, uh, thank you guys, uh, so much for hanging out. Uh, will, uh, thank you as always for supporting us in the chat room uh those of you out there watching this on youtube we will be back uh next week as always on wednesday uh for a couple more weeks we will be on dc tv um after that we will have to figure that out so stay tuned and just a reminder we are starting the 30-day trial of direct tv uh this weekend so uh tune in we'll probably have some updates uh, as the month progresses and until then we'll see do it you now. guys do it now michael do it now michael do it now yeah <laughs> there you go bye <laughs> <laughs> diamond club hopes you have enjoyed this program <laughs>